welcome to this new tutorial offered to you by LearnElectronics.org. In this tutorial you will learn how to simulate a simple BPSK system using System View. Create a blank project. Look for the random bit generator model in the algorithm design library. Drag and drop the model symbol in the schematic. Look for the gray encoder in the algorithm design library. Drag and drop the model symbol in the schematic. Connect the random bit generator to the gray encoder. Look for the bit formatter in the algorithm design library. Drag and drop the model symbol in the schematic. The bit formatter converts input bits into output NRZ symbols. Connect the output of the gray encoder to the bit formatter. Look for the generic filter designer in the algorithm design library. Drag and drop the model symbol in the schematic. Connect the output of the bit formatter to the input of the filter designer. Look for the modulator in the algorithm design library. Drag and drop the model symbol in the schematic. The modulator model implements a modulator that can perform amplitude, phase, frequency, or IQ modulation. The oscillator input is optional. When not connected, the carrier can be generated internally using the carrier parameter of the model. Connect the output of the filter generator model to the input of the modulator. Look for the noise density model in the algorithm design library. The noise density model is used to simulate a transmission channel with additive, white, Gaussian noise. The term additive refers to the fact that the channel noise is added to any other possible source of noise intrinsic to the communication system. The term white refers to the idea that channel noise has a uniform power distribution across all the frequency band of the communication system. Finally, the term Gaussian refers to the fact that the channel noise is a random variable with a zero mean normal distribution in the time domain. Drag and drop the noise density model symbol in the schematic. Connect the output of the modulator to the noise density model. Look for another generic filter designer in the algorithm design library. Drag and drop the model symbol in the schematic. Connect the output of the noise density model to the other filter generator.
look for the Envelope to Complex Converter in the Algorithm Design Library. Drag and drop the model symbol in this schematic. The Envelope to Complex Converter decomposes the input into a complex envelope and its characteristic frequency. Connect the output of the filter generator to the input of the envelope to complex converter. Look for the amplifier model in the algorithm design library. Drag and drop the model symbol in this schematic. Connect the output of the envelope to complex converter to the input of the amplifier. Look for the complex to rectangular converter in the algorithm design library. The envelope to complex model converts an input complex value into its real and imaginary parts. Drag and drop the model symbol in this schematic. Connect the output of the amplifier to the input of the complex to rectangular converter. Look for the bit for matter in the algorithm design library. Drag and drop the model symbol in this schematic. The bit for matter converts input NRZ symbols to output bits. Connect the real part of the output of the complex to rectangular converter to the input of the bit for matter. Look for the data sync in the algorithm design library. Drag and drop the data sync model symbol in this schematic. Finally, connect the output of the deformatter with the data sync. Look for the delay model in the algorithm design library. Drag and drop the model symbol in this schematic. Connect the output of the gray encoder to the delay model. Look for another bit formatter in the algorithm design library. Drag and drop the model symbol in this schematic. Connect the delay model to the input of the new bit formatter. Look for the time synchronizer in the algorithm design library. Drag and drop the model symbol in this schematic. The time synchronizer model aligns multiple input signals in time.
Connect the output of the bit formatter to the time synchronizer. Connect the real part of the output of the complex to rectangular converter to the input of the time synchronizer. Remind that the time synchronizer is a multi-input model. So, be careful when performing the connection and be sure that the labels of the input nets are different. The time synchronizer is a multiple output model. So, in order to evaluate the alignment of the two output NRZ data streams, an output bus must be created. Just create a wire. Then, edit the net properties to create a bus and define the bus width. Then click OK. Look for the cross-correlator in the algorithm design library. Drag and drop the model symbol in the schematic. The cross-correlator estimates the cross-correlation function for two input signals. Connect the outputs of the time synchronizer with the inputs of the cross-correlator. Connect bus line QI1 to the X input of the cross correlator. Then click OK. Connect bus line QI2 to the Y input of the cross correlator. Then click OK. Look for a data sync in the algorithm design library. Drag and drop the model symbol in the schematic. Drag and drop another data sync in the schematic. Connect the outputs of the cross correlator with the two data syncs that terminate the synchronization loop. Look for another delay model in the algorithm design library. Drag and drop the model symbol in the schematic. Connect the output of the gray encoder with the delay model in the measurement loop. Look for the BR model in the algorithm design library.
drag and drop the model symbol in the schematic. Connect the BR model to the delay. Close the measurement loop connecting the output of the deformator to the test input of the BR model. Finally, look for another data sync in the algorithm design library. Drag and drop the model symbol in the schematic. Connect the delay of the measurement loop to the last data sync. If you want, you can go to the workspace tree and edit the default schematic name. Change the schematic name to BPSKTXRX. Then, add a new folder to the workspace tree and call it Analyses. Click OK to close the Folder Properties window. Add a new data flow analysis to the workspace tree. Edit the analysis properties. First, choose suitable names for the analysis and the data set. Then, edit the source and sync parameters for data collection. Select the Options tab. Then, check the Options Data Persistence and Repeatable Random Sequences. Finally, click Accept to close the Data Flow Analysis window. Click on the Random Bit Generator to edit its properties. Enable the advanced parameters. Now, set the bit rate to symbol rate. Symbol rate is a system variable that will be defined later on. Then, configure the model as timed from sample rate. Set the sample rate to symbol rate in order to generate one sample per bit. Finally, click OK to close the properties window. Click on the gray encoder to edit its properties. Observe that it is not strictly necessary to gray encode a symbol in a BPSK scheme. Nonetheless, in AMRPSK modulation scheme, gray encoding is an effective technique to improve the BER. Set the number of bits of a symbol to 2. Finally, click OK to close the properties window. 
click on the filter generator to open the filter designer and edit the filter properties. Then, choose a Lopez Ray's cosine response. Set the symbol rate to the value defined by variable symbol rate. The symbol rate is used to set the passband edge frequency of the filter, that is calculated as symbol rate divided by 2. Then, set the roll-off of the filter response to 0 0.35. Enable the square root option to generate a filter with a square root raise cosine response. Then, set the length of the filter to 8 symbols. Set the filter interpolation factor to 16. This means that the filter output rate is 16 times the input rate. This is a pulse shaping filter. Its task is to interpolate the input samples and approximate the input square pulses with square root raise cosine pulses. The square pulses are limited in time. This means that this kind of pulse is not that efficient in the frequency domain. Conversely, the interpolation operation expands in time the filter impulse response leading to a better spectral efficiency when compared to a system without pulse shaping. Finally, click OK to close the filter designer. Now, click on the modulator model symbol to edit its properties. Set the carrier frequency to mod carrier. Mod carrier is a variable that will be defined later on in the system equations. Then, set the sensitivity of the amplifier to mod M sensitivity. This variable will be defined later on in the system equations. Finally, click OK to close the properties window. Click on the noise density model to edit its properties. Set the noise density to N density. This variable will be defined in the system equations. Finally, click OK to close the properties window. Click on the filter generator to edit its properties. Design a bandpass filter with a square root raise cosine response. Set the center frequency of the filter to mod carrier. Mod carrier is a variable that represents the carrier frequency. Set the symbol rate of the filter to symbol rate. Set the roll-off of the filter response to 0 0.35. Set the length of the filter response to 8 symbols.
This is a decimation filter whose task is reducing pass sampling frequency at the output by a factor of 16. Finally, click OK to close the filter designer. Observe that the detection is carried out in the passband using an envelope detector instead of down converting the incoming signal to the baseband. Click on the amplifier model symbol to edit its properties. Set the scaling factor of the amplifier. Then, click OK to close the properties window. Click on the data sync to edit its properties. Change the designator to RX bits. Set the data collection to samples. Set the upper limit for the collected samples. Finally, click OK to close the properties window. Click on the time synchronizer to edit its properties. Set the mode to time delay. Then, click OK to close the properties window. Click in the data sync to edit its properties. Set the data collection to samples. Then, change the upper limit for sample collection to 1. Change the designator to core delay. Then, click OK to close the properties window. Click on the data sync to edit its properties. Change the designator to core cross. Then, set the data collection to samples and change the upper and lower limit for sample collection. Finally, click OK to close the properties window. Click on the data sync to edit its properties. Change the designator to TX bits. Set the data collection to samples. Then, change the upper limit for sample collection. Finally, click OK to close the properties window. Click OK to edit the BER model. Set the start stop option to samples. Set the trigger to start the BER measurement to 20 samples. Set the number of bits per frame to 1000. Finally, click OK to close the properties window. Go to the workspace tree. Then, click on the equation symbol to open the equation editor and define the system equations. Write the program to define all the variables previously used in the schematic. Remind that the interrogation mark denotes a tunable variable.
click the Go button to update the system variables. Add a new equation to the workspace tree. Don't change the default name. Finally, click OK to close the properties window. Write the equations to compute the ideal BER for a BPSK modulation. Observe that these equations use a data set called BPSK BER sweep data that will be generated later on by running the sweep analysis. Finally, click the Go button to update the variables. Now, add a sweep analysis to generate the missing dataset for the ideal BER equations. Edit the sweep analysis properties. First, give a name to the analysis and to the dataset. Then, change the range of the swept parameter. Finally, set the type of sweep and the step size. Then, click OK to close the properties window. Click on the noise density model to edit its properties. Then. Set the unit of density variable to dBm. Finally, click OK to close the properties window. Before running the sweep analysis for BER measurement, you have to make sure that the transmitted and the received bit streams are aligned. So, disable to short the noise density model, run a data flow analysis, and cross correlate the transmitted and the received bit streams to determine the lag that aligns the two data streams. Add a new folder to the workspace tree and call it graphs. Then, click OK to close the properties window. Now, Add a new graph to the project. Select General as a type of series. Then, select the BPSK data data set. Tick the Core Cross checkbox to plot the data collected by the Core Cross data sync. Finally, click OK to close the graph series wizard. Edit the graph properties and give the graph a name and a title. Finally, click OK to close the properties window. From the cross-correlation graph we deduce that a lack of 8 samples is necessary to align the transmitted and the received bit streams. Let's verify that a lack of 8 samples is the correct one. So, 
Click on the delay model in the synchronization loop to edit its properties. Set the delay to 8 samples. Then, click OK to close the properties window. Click on the play button to run the analyses once again. Observe that transmitter and receiver are now perfectly synchronized. Now, disable to short the data syncs at the end of the synchronization loop. Click on the delay model in the measurement loop to edit its properties. Set the delay to 8. Then, click OK to close the properties window. Enable the noise density model to allow the sweep analysis. Then, run all the analyses. Add a new graph to the workspace tree. Select Y versus X as a type of series. Then, select BPSKBER sweep data as the data set. Tick the checkbox of the ebb and zero variable sweep index. Select once again the BPSKBER sweep data data set. Tick the B5BER checkbox to plot the data collected by the BER measurement model. Then click OK to close the graph series wizard. In the graph properties window, Click the Add button to add a new dataset on the same graph. In the Graph Series Wizard, select the dataset Generate by Equation 2. Tick the Ebb N0 EQN checkbox to plot the swept values of the variable Ebb N0. Select once again the dataset generated by Equation 2. Tick BER Theory checkbox to plot the data set with the BER theoretical values for the BPSK modulation. Finally, click OK to close the graph series wizard. In the graph properties window, tick the option show all columns. Then, assign labels to the BER curves. Uncheck the Auto Scale option for the X axis. Then, set the maximum value as well. Select the Y axis tab. Then, tick the Logarithmic Scale option. Finally, click OK to close the Graph Properties window. Now you can observe the ideal and the measured BR curves. Thank you for watching. Bookmark www.learnelectronics.org in your browser and check the website periodically for new free material. Don't forget to follow Learn Electronics and the social networks. Please support Learn Electronics with a donation, a Facebook like, a plus one on Google Plus, or a tweet to your friend.